Welcome to another CBA Level 3 Grill Coaching Session. This session looks at transferring your drawing to the sheet steel, rusty sheet steel, taking measurements from the drawing and then creating the uh, blown over beveled leaf scroll tip as well as the water leaf. You're going to want to transfer the paper drawing to a piece of sheet steel, specifically rusty sheet steel because it will uh, hold the chalk. You only need one quadrant of the drawing to be transferred, <coughs> excuse me, as all four quadrants are basically the same piece. I have holes punched in my rusty template to accommodate thumbtacks, which I find useful rather than tape, but then I'm obliged to work on a wooden background to accommodate the thumbtack. Create some chalk dust by rubbing some blackboard chalk across a file, looking at that top left there, and then rub that into the chosen quadrant of your drawing. You can find it useful to use a sheet of coarse brown paper, such as a grocery sack, um, and chalk that first and use it like a piece of carbon paper, putting it underneath the drawing as you transfer the drawing. I feel it feels a little better uh, as you work with your ballpoint pen. Go around the outside of the drawing with your ballpoint pen and you want that pen to be red or other bright colour so that it stands out against the drawing showing where you've worked or more importantly where you still have work to do. You don't want to miss a piece. Once you've got that done you're going to go around your drawing which is now chalk and quite delicate to that stage with a silver pencil. And I start from my uh, left or right hand. I'm right handed so I'm going to start from this right hand side and work to the left. That way I'm not going to rub off any chalk marks with the heel of my hand as I'm using the silver pencil to go around the, the outside. Once you've got your drawing transferred you're going to step out for the leaf and the scroll. I've got my dividers here set for half an inch and that way I am getting the circular arc and less of a cord as I work and I take this leaf all the way to the tip. So I've got my gap set half an inch and I'm working right there from where the bifurcation starts of the scroll tip and the leaf. I'm going to add to those measurements about an inch and a half per side, two sides obviously, for a weld. Uh, I know that measurement is going to change during the welding, but we can work on that later when we're looking at the remainder of the scroll. I find it easier to hold the scroll tip uh, while spreading and shaping the water leaf rather than the other way round. So I make the scroll tip first. The scroll tip basically is a free lunch. Uh, we make it the right length and we're done. We don't need to know how much material is needed. Uh, but we do need to know uh, how much is material is needed to create the leaf. Uh, and this is a two-step process. First of all, we're going to create a taper and then we're going to spread uh, the bar to make the leaf. I first thing I do is I center punch a datum some portion back from the end of the bar. Four inches comes to mind. The leaf of my original drawing, which may be different from your drawing, my leaf measures about three inches. I find I gain about quarter inch in length when I create the taper and I gain another three eighths of an inch when I spread the leaf uh, and so I need to accommodate that for my original. So the first thing I do is I do a test piece, find out what I've got and then I measure back to my four inch mark, subtract that uh, material that I've got and then I know how much material I needed to make this. I overcooked mine slightly by an eighth of an inch. I wanted three inches which was right there. Um, you can see I've got an inch and a half of remaining stock. I'm going to call it inch and five eighths and so I'm left needing two and three eighths of an inch of parent bar for my water leaf and that's important information. When I spread I get about 75% of my expected yield. What does that mean? Well in theory if this is three quarter inch wide and a quarter inch thick and I'm spreading it out to 1 16th, I should get, because there are 4 1 16th and quarter of an inch, I should get 4 times 3 quarters of an inch, so 3 inches. I don't. I get 75% of that, or about 2 and a quarter inches. 
the remainder seems to go in stretch of the bar or elongation of the bar and scale. Now that I've got my uh, pieces sorted out, I remember the scroll tip is a free lunch. We already know its measurement. I believe mine is something like five and a quarter or five and a half inches. So I just make the scroll tip. I've got my allowance of an inch and a half either side, three inches overall uh, for the weld. And then I need from my test piece two and three eighths of an inch as shown here for my leaf. And then I can just chalk this bar and make some center punch marks there and I know where I'm working. So let's turn our attention to the scroll. For the blown over beveled leaf scroll, that's a mouthful, create a short taper on the end of the bar. I'm not caring about the length of the taper. What's important here is that angle of the taper. If your taper is too long, you're going to have a very thin and weedy um, leaf and it's not going to look right. I'm going to draw that taper out a little bit to bring this down to, let's call it a strong sixteenth of an inch at the tip. And that top surface here, um, if that is curved, that's kind of handy. It doesn't have to be, but if you leave it curved, that's going to be good when you make your leaf. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay off as much of the bar as the bar is wide. And we're dealing with three quarters of an inch or so. And so I'm going to lay off three quarters of an inch. It doesn't matter if your taper comes back here and rests on the anvil because it's going to get forged anyway, as you can see by that top right photograph. Um, so just lay off as much of the bar as the bar is wide and then neck it down to leave me uh, three eighths of an inch of material. So leave half of the bar thickness. Extend that taper back to your five and a half inch mark that you've already got center punched um, and then you're good to go. I dress the, um, the forging and I come down to a little less than parent stock thickness here right at the base of the leaf. That means when I spread this leaf and I bring the leaf stock down to whatever this is, I get a little bit more material in the leaf and therefore a slightly larger leaf. I find it handy to start the blowback of the leaf now uh, while the bar is straight and you can see that on my top two photographs. You can do it later after you've bent uh, for the, the scroll but I don't find this very handy way of doing business at all so I do it when it's straight. You're going to want two left facing and two right facing beveled scrolls. They are directional so as you offer up your scroll tip to your chalk marks on your anvil, have the um, shoulder two up, which is going to give you two right facing, and then two down, which will give you two left facing. Um, I want you then to chalk mark your um, bar, center punch, and that center punch is going to be on the same side of the bar as the shoulder for the leaf and the bevel on the scroll. So these are going to get, the center punch marks are going to get lost in the welded surface. Once you've got your center punch marks, then you go back and you're going to bend the neck of the scroll to 90 degrees. Keep this bend short. There's a correlation between the bend, uh, this initial bend, and the final look of the scroll. So half inch in diameter is what I'm looking for. And then if you haven't already, start the blowback for the leaf. The beveled scrolls, and that's the blown over beveled leaf scroll and the beveled scroll, are basically cones. And what do we know about making a cone? Well, the first thing we do is we bend it the hard way, and then we bend it the easy way, and that's going to make us a, coal, a cone. If you want a tighter cone, more initial bend. If you want a relaxed cone, less of initial bend. So if I was to make a conical hat from a sheet of newspaper or something like that, I'm going to cut out the desired shape first. And then I'm going to roll that and I'm going to roll it in such a way, and I'm going to call the roll a bend. Um, I'm going to bend it in such a way that I am bending on this line from the tip to the edge. And if I don't bend along that line, for example, this middle slide, if I bend off the line, then I'm not going to make a conical hat. I'm just going to have a piece of origami or something. So it's important that that line uh, is followed. We're dealing with a portion of that. Uh, we're dealing with a frustum of a cone, a section of a cone, if you will. And so you can see that it's 90 degrees to the tangent 
or 90 degrees to the center line. It doesn't really matter. They're all going to be 90 degrees. So we're going to work on this 90 degree line. So here's my um, scroll tip, my blown over. This is the blown over beveled leaf scroll, obviously. And you can see that I bent it the hard way, as we do with a cone. And then I'm going to bend it the easy way, bending 90 degrees to from the tip, which is out here somewhere, to the tangent. And I'm just going to follow that um, center line, making it 90 degrees. And I want to be done with that bend before this leaf interferes with my hammer. So I'm, again, that's part of the reason for keeping that tight, is so we don't interfere. The other is there's a correlation between this and this and so keep it tight once uh, I've done with my uh, initial scroll work here of turning that uh, cone if you will then I can just move to a set of horns or a set of a wrench in this case and scrolling tongs and I finish the remainder of the scroll at the vise the bevel the bevel is both uh, on both sides of the bar with the apex in about in the middle of the bar. I start with the outside section and I come around and then I'm starting, once I've passed the bend, I am starting to work my way out to the edge and I want the bevel to finish at the same point as your taper. So as you work on the outside, you can see the top slides here working the outside, that's going to close this bend slightly and then you're going to work on the inside and that's going to open the bend. What I do want you to concentrate on is blowing out this edge. You can see it starts straight here, that's the bottom of the bar, and I want you to make that curved. And that's going to fit in nicely with the curve of the scroll later on. And then here's my result. I've got a nice good line going all the way through the bend and then just past the bend it starts to bifurcate out towards the edge, hopefully finishing at the um, end of the taper there. I've already got my uh, sense punch mark so I know where the end of the uh, the bar is so I'm going to cut it from the remainder of the bar. I am going to draw that down to a taper about half the thickness here on the end. Try and get that end round. If it's not round uh, you're going to have a funny shaped leaf so if You've got a little bit of the rag from the cut left just to take that to the vise and get rid of it and then I'm going to forge my leaf, spread the leaf and I start uh, out here somewhere and I work up to my two and three quarter inch mark wherever that is until I get my two and a quarter inches, my 75% uh, of material and if you're hunt hunting for material it's going to be right here in the middle. Just start in the middle and then bring it out to the edges again. I like to spread the base of the leaf a little bit and I feel that goes a long way in covering that tr transition point of the scroll to leaf. Um, so if you didn't do that, if you came straight out, this little portion here is not going to be there and it's just going to look a little funky. I want it to look like a piece of celery around a bar. Your water leaf really can be forged in two ways. Uh, you can do it off the end of the scroll stock bar, which we're going to do. Or you can do it as an applique method, um, which I'm showing here on the right. I'm just going to show the scroll bar method during this little clip. But just know you could do it this way and no problems at all with the judge. Taking a general heat along the entire length of the leaf, I want you to make a, a channel. In order to keep the channel centered, I work on the widest point of the leaf first and then bring it back to the base. If I start at the base and work out, my channel generally goes south on me. Um, so start wide and then work back to the base. Heating just the tip. So now you've isolated the tip because I want to keep this back portion straight. Most of my curve happens in that top half or top two thirds max of the leaf. So keeping this lower portion there straight. So isolate the heat, feed it out past the leafing stake, and then you're just going to brush this with your hammer. At the same time you're brushing with the hammer, you're going to start dropping your tong hand. And that is going to start to give you this anti-clastic raising, this curl here. 
take another heat, extend the heat a little bit, and you're trying to spread the edges or um, stretch the edges, I suppose. And so if you haven't got a heat here on the edge or a good heat, it's not going to happen. So as soon as you start to see the edges getting cold, it's time to take another heat. No sense waiting, waste, wasting effort. Again, brush it with your uh, hammer, drop your tong hand, and you're just going to keep going until you've got about 270 degrees of curl. And that may seem like a lot of curl. I like this uh, tubular leafing stake. It allows me to work underneath. And so I'm just going to sweeten up the end of my curl here until I get that nice 270 degrees. The tip of the leaf is pointing back to the remainder of the leaf. This should be reasonably straight, the lower half of the leaf. And the curve or the scroll, if you like, is confined to the upper half of the leaf. So when you look at this, Here's my 270 degrees. As soon as I crimp, that extra material of the crimp starts to uncurl my 270 degrees. And so I overcurl first, knowing I'm going to lose a portion of that when I get to uh, crimping the stake, uh, crimping the leaf. You can see here that my, the tip of my leaf doesn't look particularly attractive. So I am just going to sweeten that when I finish. Just support the um, the leaf, put this the channel over the bick and then just give this a couple of taps. Just turn this end of the leaf in slightly. I believe the applique method does give you a nicer look. You can see that it really looks like a piece of celery going around the celery stalk. Um, and it's actually an easier leaf to form. Uh, so it's your call whether you do the applique method or off the end of the scroll. It's one more bar of steel to buy and for the three quarter inch by quarter inch starting stock you're going to need two inch by one eighth inch um, flat bar to make the applique leaf. So that's the perimeter of the parent bar with no allowance for welding. At this stage you're ready to crimp the edges of the leaf. Uh, and as we saw earlier at the course introduction the crimping stake needs to be able to accept the depth of the the channel of the leaf so you need this clearance here because you're going to be swinging this leaf um, to flare these edges so if you haven't got this you're going to have some problems you will notice that the crimping is not 90 degrees to the center line or perpendicular it's off at an angle and i typically if you were to divide this channel into three the crimps are on the outer thirds with this inner third um, being left uncrimped. So do most of your work on this outer third and then most of the flare right on the edge. So you can see here I've got I'm got a slight crimp. This uh, the inner third is uncrimped and I'm just about to dress the edge here. So as I'm tapping on this last let's call it quarter inch I'm dropping my tong hand trying to get a flare here and I'll work from the inside out and I'll also work from the outside going in. There are two positions for the smith. The smith is standing here where I'm indicating with my laser pointer. So you're going to have your tong hand bent or you're going to have your tong hand straight to work on the other side. If you're in either, if you're not in either of those two positions, you need to reposition. Once you've got your leaf sorted out, you're going to go back to the marks on the edge of the anvil and you're going to mark the back of the bar this time and you are going to then nick that, fold it and get ready for the weld. And so at this stage, you've got the cup of the leaf, the shoulder and the bevel of the scroll and the center punch marks are all on the inside of this weld. I tend to do all of my assemblies uh, together and bring them along step by step. That way I don't get any disappointments and I have a spare just in case I get a catastrophic failure. And of course, obviously here my spare is left facing. Um, so I should really have two spares, one left, one right. But it's also good to have a spare just to do a test piece if I need it. Looking ahead when you're going to weld this assembly to the main body of the scroll, having the tip of the scroll here, the flat tip of the scroll, resting on the anvil gives you a nice stable platform for the weld. If you were to have the 
leaf resting on the anvil it's going to be unstable and you run the risk of damaging the delicate leaf with the corner or the edge of the, the anvil here. So knowing that gives you the orientation for the scarf and that's important. So when I make my weld I'm going to spend most of my attention right here at the base of the scroll tip and the leaf. I'm not worried or not so worried about getting a weld up here because that's going to be further welded to the remainder of the scroll and that gives me a chance then to finish that welding. So I put all of my effort right here at the base. Once I've got it um, nicely welded here I'm going to bring it to the edge of the anvil again being taking care so you don't ding the leaf and I'm just going to bring this back to my three quarter inch in width. Here's a leaf that I thought I had nicely welded but when I welded it onto the remainder of the scroll it popped. I did repair this, I put it back in, brought it up to welding temperature and got that welded but it did two things for me. One is it was slightly below what I wanted for my look and two is it moved the leaf further along the bar um, and it made it almost unworkable for me. You can see from the drawing that the leaf is going to drop down vertically um, parallel to these um, upset corners here and so if this had been slightly longer this leaf is going to come further around and now it's going to come down at an angle it's not the look I want so yes you can fix it best not to have have it happen in the first place so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to reduce the width on the end in preparation for making a scarf I'm working over an anvil block so I am protecting the delicate leaf and I'm going to draw a taper, a short taper to the end and then I'm going to create the step of the scarf. Next what I'm going to do is I want to find out how much material I need from the um, upset corners here to wherever this, um, this one, one and a half inches of material stretched out to. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it inch and three quarters, I'm going to drop a line here somewhere in the middle of the scarf um, and I'm going to subtract that from the overall measurement. So I'm going to step this out. I believe mine was something like 12 and a half inches. And then I'm going to remove an inch and three quarters. And what I <clears throat> will need to do back later is work out where to put this center punch mark on the parent bar before forging. Because I'm going to make this corner before I do this taper. That's the end of this particular coaching session. The following coaching session is going to look at volume and area calculations which you're going to need to help determine how much stock you need for the remainder of the scroll and where to place the upset corners. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking on that round button there to the right and the next video in the series is shown on that rectangular button to the left. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.